So I can already see the comments. Doom guy died for this. Yep, he did. So there's this new race mod on the Steam Workshop that adds the Rackle. The Rackle has various advantages, such as they move quicker than humans. They get a melee battle bonus, and they're stronger than humans when they are in gun or bare hands because they use their teeth and tails. I'm assuming this means they're just using their gun as a melee weapon here. I don't think their teeth or their tail would help them shoot a gun. The Rackle has no legs. Instead, it has a big tail. The tail is stronger than a human leg. They also don't need to eat that often, and and if you eat a raw meatball, which I'm guessing is made from meat, you don't need to feed the Rockle for another five days. Caution though, if you don't feed the Rockle raw meatball, the above advantages disappear. So I'm guessing they lose their movement speed, melee battle bonus, and their strong tail, I guess, becomes weaker maybe. The Rockle can also withstand hot weather and they don't get food poisoning. Their weaknesses are they are carnivores. They do not eat vegetables. They can eat cooked meals, but there's a disadvantage to their mood. Their organs are located in their tail, I guess. The upper tail is strong enough to protect its organs but it can also increase its weakness. Very slow cultivation. The rockle is significantly slower than humans at, it doesn't say but I'm guessing that's planting. That's what cultivation means, right? High food poisoning possibility when the rockle cooks, it is more likely to cause food poisoning than humans. So yeah, basically don't have your rockle be the chef. And the rockle is also very vulnerable to cold environments. The contents of the mod include vanilla clothing is available. They're all retouched according to their unique body. So I'm wondering if that means that rockles can use vanilla clothing. That would be really cool. The problem with a lot of race mods is they have their own specific clothing and it's really annoying to have to make different clothing for different races. There is some specific clothing, maybe something that like covers the tail but in general they can use vanilla clothing that's what i'm gathering two species specific foods i guess the raw meatball and then i don't know something else hell mintics can be produced using snake skins gut worm muscle parasites i don't know what that is is that some kind of biological weapon that you can use race specific backstories permanent enemy faction and friendship faction so i've got a really cool idea for a naked brutality start involving the void storyteller with the custom 500 percent threat scale the only other settings we're going to alter is lower colonists instant kills down to zero making it so our colonists will not die instantly from a random bad RNG hit, but they can still die from the normal ways like bleeding to death, dying from fire, and stuff like that. We're also lowering scary rot down to zero, so wild animals will not have the scary disease and like you can't butcher them. And enemy death on down, we're just going to lower that down to zero, so enemies don't have a higher chance of dying than a normal colonist. So here's Snake Girl, and I really like this hairstyle. There's two eyes up here. They kind of look like snake eyes. There's a bunch of different ones, but... That one is by far my favorite. Since we're playing against Void on 500% difficulty, we're going to make her a bit OP. So she has the health condition, no food poisoning, which the mod just gives her that by default. As for her skills, she's got burning passions and everything, and we didn't give her any skills. Like, we can't actually lower her skills any more than they already are at. The only thing she's getting skills from, like 3 and Intellectual, for example, is the fact that she's a Rockle student. She's a school-trained Rockle. She made friends at a school and learned how to survive in the periphery. I don't, I don't know what that is. But that gives her a bunch of skill bonuses, and in her adult Adulthood, there's only one Rockle adulthood, and this one just gives plus one in melee, minus one in plants, and minus two in social. So that's a really trash adulthood, but that's okay. We're giving her burning passions for all these skills, so she's gonna learn them pretty quickly, anyways. Now for her traits. So with the KV More Traits mod, I made it so everyone is gonna have eight traits, including her, and so she's gonna have a strong constitution, which gives her more immunity gain speed. So she's gonna get over illnesses quicker. The Void Storyteller does tend to throw out illnesses, I think, more than other storytellers, and just negative events in general she also gets less toxic sensitivity which i assume since she was a snake girl she was not gonna have any toxic sensitivity being that toxic sensitivity is basically like poison sensitivity but i don't think that's the case because it's not here under the health conditions next she's gonna be industrious so she works quicker tough so she takes 50 percent less damage definitely dodger gives her a ton more dodge chance ninja like also gives her more dodge chance but then also gives her more melee hit chance and movement speed i don't think the hunting stealth actually matters and a little bit more melee that's why we're at six melee right now and then quick hand also gives her some melee, reduces her aiming time, and gives her more global work speed and hit chance. But then finally, I'm going to be using the Rimworld of Magic mod on this playthrough, and the Chaos Mage is a really cool magic class that I've never gone over. And it's hard to really explain what a Chaos Mage does, I just kind of have to show you guys. Being that she's a Chaos Mage, she does learn a bit quicker, but it does lower her research speed and work speed slightly. It gives her more psychic sensitivity and less immunity gain speed by 5%, but we counter that with the fact that she's got a strong constitution. We also gave her the Arcane Conduit trait, so she regens mana 40 
10% faster. Here's the world we're sending Snake Girl into. You'll notice there's a lot of these gray tiles and these are wasteland tiles. And we're gonna be starting in the south where it's kind of warm on a wasteland tile. So here's the wasteland. You're gonna notice there's a lot of green. You don't want people to step in that as they'll start getting toxic buildup. Also on the map, there's these toxic barrels. And if people get within, I think it's four tiles of them, they take a bunch of radiation and that increases their toxic buildup by 15%, which is really not a good thing. So we're gonna make zones around all of these toxic barrels. I believe the zones have to be nine by nine if we're being super perfect about it. All right, so I made all the zones around the toxic barrels. Now I'm gonna go to manage areas and I'm gonna invert these zones. And as you can see now, most of the map is filled up with a purple and the purple is where Snake Girl is gonna be allowed to go. If we just set her allowed area to this radiation free and then she's gonna steer clear of these not purple zones, which are the toxic barrels. I know a lot of you guys probably already knew how to do that, but for those of you guys who didn't. And so yeah, now for the cool stuff. One thing to note is that I did start on Naked Brutality, but in the character editor screen, let's just say she was not looking YouTube friendly. So I gave her this patch leather tribal wear, which is the worst quality material, but at least it's covering up her naughty parts. I do also really like her face. She's got that, hey, you just walked in on me reading look. But yeah, so being that Snake Girl is a chaos mage, we started with the random ability. We got Enchanter Stone, which does cost 84 mana. And with our mana regen trait, it actually lowers our max mana. So we can't even use that. What we can do though is use her ability Chaos Tradition, which is unique to the Chaos Mage. And she's going to cast that and we get two new abilities. And the abilities we got are completely random light bursts, which is not going to be useful for us right now. An engineer weapon actually could be useful, or maybe not actually. It will create a copy of a weapon, but that weapon has to be really high tech. Industrial or later weapons only, so yeah, we can't use either of these abilities really. Chaos Tradition does only have a cooldown of 30 seconds though, so once that cooldown's back, we can get two new abilities. So one thing I just noticed is that even though it's 57 degrees, which isn't that cold, Snake Girl's shivering. Her comfortable temperature range is 77 degrees to 122 Two degrees. I thought our tribal wear might help a bit with that, but patch leather is just complete garbage for insulation. It only offers 9 degrees protection against the cold and heat, which is not good. So our first priority is going to be to get Snake Girl some new clothing. There are a few animals on the map that we can hunt and we can skin them for their leather. Before we do that though, we're going to have Snake Girl chop down a tree. Hopefully this is going to be enough wood for a club, as yeah, we're chopping this down pretty slowly. She's got one planting now, but it's still not going so quick. And that was 10 wood. Did she pick any up or is that actually... Okay, it's 10 wood. What about these ancient power poles? We can deconstruct this for hopefully more wood maybe? Or Okay, 19 wood for that. And then we got this power pole over here for probably 19 more wood I'm guessing. Yeah. We're now going to have her turn that wood into a club. Before we do that though, we're going to use chaos tradition again and we're going to see if we get anything good. Transmutate. Can transmute a material into a material of equal or greater value. Wait, that could be really good. I wonder if we can transmutate all this wood into something better. We can try that. Okay, we turn it into six uranium. That is absolutely not what we wanted to do. One thing I just thought of too is if those pine trees are only giving like 10 wood a pop, we're not going to have much wood on the map. So we're actually going to use steel for our weapon. We're going to have snake girl mine out this compacted steel which is taking quite some time she is at one mining now but yeah i'm on third speed right now it's actually getting kind of late even it's already 2 p.m and we started doing stuff at 6 a.m and we got 24 steel which is not that much it's not gonna be quite enough for a knife but we can deconstruct the steel wall for only three steel i guess i wonder if that's because it was damaged like I thought it should be four. Okay, yeah. But yeah, we're gonna Snake Girl use all this steel to make a knife. We have almost the perfect amount. And she's probably gonna make a pretty bad one because she's got two in crafting. Yeah, you know, she made the worst she possibly could have. Which is actually unfortunate. There was only a 20% chance she did that. 53 chance it was poor and 23% chance it was normal. So yeah, we got the poop end of the stick, you could say. We got blink so she can actually blink over this area nice and then we got valiant charge which is like a kind of another blink you jump up in the air and then it does damage on landing but we don't want to dump out all our mana so we're just not going to use that for now we're going to melee attack this squirrel and nicely one shot it pick this thing up and there's a couple more mutated squirrels on the map there's actually not many there's okay nice we killed that one too it does a little green animation but it's not poisoning snake girl or anything but yeah there's not many of these on the map there's only four i think and okay this one revenged but yeah we're one-shotting all of them also up here there's a rat and we're gonna melee this thing down too as the rats and the squirrels have the same type of leather which will be important once we get to butchering up the creatures before we do that though we're gonna mine out some more compacted steel so we can make a steel butcher table as we want to get all the leather that we can out of these things also let's use chaos tradition while we're mining we got a couple new abilities repulsion which generates a burst of energy and it ejects people away i guess and then lightning storm neither of which really help us right now there are a couple abilities that like improve manipulation and they do other stuff 
stuff too, like heals and stuff like that. So we're just gonna, yeah, keep casting it. It doesn't cost any mana to cast. Stone skin actually could be really good. Apply stone skin to the target pawn. Each charge absorbs a single attack regardless of how powerful or weak the attack is. It will only absorb one attack though. That doesn't seem that good. We're gonna Chaos Tradition again. Earth Sprites, call forth Earth Sprites to transform the terrain. They are diligent workers capable of breaking down rock or stone into its base component. Wait, what? Okay, we're gonna cast that. Oh, we need more mana though. The mana cost is 72, so we can cast it. Also, Snake Girl really wants to sleep. Um, I'm not sure we want to do our sleeping situation. Maybe we just get enough steel so we can make a bed. It's gonna be 40 or 45 steel for a bed. And also, she must have just got a level up in mining. Yeah, she's at two in mining now because she got a little bit more steel from that compacted machinery. But yeah, there's a ruins over here. We're gonna turn this into a makeshift bedroom, and we're gonna build a steel bed inside of it. There's a 15% chance we botch this, so we're just gonna hope we're not unlucky here. It would really suck to waste half the steel, especially when she needs... <laughs> Why did I know? I had this dread in the back of my mind that she was going to botch it when she needs to sleep, of course. It's not the end of the world, though. We can deconstruct this steel table for steel. We'll repair it before we deconstruct it. And yeah, that gave us a bunch of steel. This should be enough. There's no way we get that. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna pick that steel up and she's going to take a little nappy nap. And yeah, her comfort's going up. Her rest is going up. Her mood in general is just going to be going up. This whole thing, by the way, I think is floored in, which is kind of nice. Yeah, there's actually sandstone flagstone over all the tiles here, which is really cool. So yeah, the room's really clean and the beauty's neutral. It's a dull room, but that's all right. At least it's not awful. So she's not going to get a moodlet debuff for sleeping in an awful room or like sleeping outside. But yeah, so it's a new day. Let's drop all these squirrels in here and let's see how long we have on these squirrels. They're going to spoil in 1.7 days. So that should be plenty of time to butcher them up. We just need to mine out some more steel. Let's also use the earth sprite ability. We have 80 mana now. We have to target a location with this ability. I guess I'm just going to target into the rock and we're going to cast it and hope for the best here. Okay, there's some glowy things that are, I guess, doing stuff. Oh yeah, they are. They're mining out this compacted steel for us. Okay, that is really cool. One thing I also noticed is if they're summoned into an area named Earth Sprites, then they will only move to nearby cells within the area. And I did make an area around this compacted steel named Earth Sprites. So hopefully they're just gonna mine out all that and then maybe I can move the area to somewhere else when they're done. I'm not really sure. Casting that ability was actually really rough on Snake Girl though. She has arcane weakness severely ill now, which lowers her manipulation and consciousness by a ton she can barely do anything really and she's also now got hypothermia because I guess it's too cold We got to get her inside and just have a rest. I guess yeah, she's moving really slowly right now but I guess arcane weakness went down to drained. It's not as bad. It was severely ill. This one's not as bad too It only lowers consciousness by 15 apparently the amount of arcane weakness is relative to the mana cost of the ability So yeah, when we cast a really high tier ability like earth sprites, which should cost 72 mana That really drains her to fix the hypothermia problem or I guess it's actually going away on its own I'm not sure why she got hypothermia all of a sudden. I mean, it was at 75, I think, and now it's up to 80. So, yeah, I don't know. And we got steel from that. Okay, should have probably assumed. I was gonna have her make a campfire, but since she doesn't have hypothermia anymore, or it's going down, maybe we'll have her just continue mining out this compacted steel, which is actually down to 20%. And okay, they mined out the first compacted steel. It only gave us 23 steel though. So it's basically assuming that the sprites have really low mining skill, I guess. She went for a walk, which boosts up her recreation, but yeah, we're gonna have her help mine out the rest of this compacted steel. Oh, and she vomited. I think she vomited because the arcane weakness and she lost a good amount of her food actually. Do we have enough steel over here to make the butchery table, by the way. We definitely should. We need 90 steel, I think it is. Before we make the butcher table, we're gonna let it rest a bit, as yeah, we still got arcane weakness weakened, which only lowers consciousness by 10% now and sight by 20. We wanna wait out this debuff as long as we can before we build the butcher table, though. As with these debuffs, she now has a 21% chance to botch, which before it was only 15. It's not a huge chance, but I mean, you guys already saw like the 15% chance failed. So yeah, I think maybe we just wait out the debuff here, or at least until these mutated squirrels and the rats start to go bad. We still got 1.1 more days for that, and so there's really no rush at least until she starts to get really hungry i did also notice her mana bar is actually not going up it's actually going down and the earth sprites require mana in order to sustain them so while they're up it's actually lowering our mana regen even with her increased mana regen traits she's still losing a bit of mana she is level two though and we can give her some points in clarity if we are one point that should be enough hopefully to where she's gaining mana no not quite okay we'll get two points in clarity and then she'll start gaining mana at a really slow rate or never mind she's actually just not losing mana at least while we 
we were waiting for her arcane weakness to go away, we rearranged the base a bit. The room's still completely floored in, it's just a bit bigger, and doing that improved its impressiveness a bit. We need five more in order to buff it up to mediocre, and that's gonna improve Snake Girl's mood a little bit if she's sleeping in a nicer room. But yeah, her arcane weakness did run out, so we're now gonna have her build a steel butcher table, and I always forget this, but even steel butcher tables do require a little bit of wood. We need 20 wood, which that's not that much. We'll just have her chop down this fully grown pine tree for, how much was it, like 10 wood? 11 wood, very nice. This one's 87% grown. I'm guessing this is gonna give us like nine wood. 11, okay. She must have got a planting skill then. She's at two planting now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the case. And then 12 wood for that one. It was a little bit more grown. All right, now we're just gonna really hope she does not botch this. We don't really care about the steel loss. <laughs> We have 24 wood too. We need one more wood, I think. I mean, we have enough steel, so that's not gonna be a problem. Oh yeah, I guess it's only 20 wood. Well, it's good we chopped down more trees than we needed, I guess. There's no way she botches two in a row, right? Yeah, okay. All right, so it's pretty good timing building this butcher table. We only have 10 hours till all this meat goes bad. And 29 light leather is actually a crazy amount for these squirrels. So apparently this race gets a three times bonus to butchery efficiency, which is actually a crazy amount. And that's gonna be really good for us considering that there's very little animals on the map. We should only be getting like, I think 11, light leather per squirrel and even less actually because she has really bad cooking skill at the butcher table we now can make raw meatballs we can either make simple ones or lavish ones so one raw meatball costs 70 meat i guess and yeah it says meatball on it that's pretty cool let's have her make a stool before she eats her once every six day meal and yeah here she goes she is just diving into that meatball it's 70 meat on that thing so that should boost her food by quite a bit okay yeah that's full nutrition it's funny because i sat here wondering why it said she didn't have enough material to make the big simple raw meatball in bulk i thought it was something to do with some of our mods or something but yeah to make it in bulk we need four times the amount so we need 280 meats i just realized our earth sprites finished mining out all the steel and i didn't expand the area and so once they got done mining out all the steel in this area they just disappeared so i think what we do here now since we have plenty of steel is we're just going to reroll our abilities again we now got only one actually alter fate which can revert environmental conditions right now we don't have any though so yeah we're just going to reroll abilities again enchant weapon enchants a melee weapon oh that's pretty good we'll cast it on this steel knife and it only costs 10 mana but we have to have it equipped okay we'll cast it on her steel knife now and her weapon now has a fire enchant which will burn or set fire to an object that's really useful if you set someone on fire they'll just wander around aimlessly and you can keep beating on them while they're on fire it says it requires mana to sustain though so we're going to turn the enchantment off Oh, I think it lowers our max mana maybe. Oh yeah, okay. So we cast it again, and this time we got a dark enchant, which can cause blindness in a target. Not sure which one's better. She's getting pretty low on mana though, so I don't think we want to re-enchant the weapon again. One thing I almost forgot is Snake Girl is still chilly, and we need to make her clothing. So we're going to make this steel hand tailor bench, which I don't really care if she botches this. It only costs steel. It's 75 steel, I think it was. We have 229, so yeah, we have plenty of steel. And she, of course, did not botch it. Why would she botch it when it doesn't matter, right? But yeah, with the steel hand tailor bench, we can now make her some equipment oh, this is actually really cool i think this is new they made a wizard hat that you can make and it gives a little bit more energy and arcane power and also increases like social impact carrying capacity whoa in order to make it we need 30 unrefined magicite though and we only have 15 we get this from mining out steel and holy crap okay this is insane the cloth rackle star idol dress gives 25 percent more trade price improvement okay we're gonna want to make one of those for sure there's two versions of this the star idol dress costs 135 leather which we only have 110 right now are there any more squirrels on the map no wait yeah there's actually one more mutated squirrel i forgot about this one because it's not in the best spot like it's all the way over here on the east side of the map near this ancient reactor hive and i've not gone over this thing yet before i go over it though we're actually going to mine out this limestone and that's going to give us access to the east side of the map without having to go all the way south and this could also give us some unrefined magicite for the wizard's hat there's just a random chance when mining that you get the unrefined magicite and yeah we didn't get any but yeah so the squirrels down here near this ancient reactor hive and this thing is spawning a bunch of insect jelly every once in a while. I believe it's also spawning in hostile insects. Like up here, there's a royal mega spider, but it doesn't seem to be hostile to us right now. And it's not interested in attacking us. We're going to grab all that jelly. That was a ton of jelly. We're going to kill this squirrel, which we did not kill it actually on the first hit. But yeah, we'll now butcher this guy up for... Wow, that was barely enough leather. Oh, it's actually not enough. We need four more. No. Well, that's a bummer. We're going to have her just make the regular idol costume, which does cost... I think it was 90 leather. And this thing only gives us a trade price improvement of 10%. That's right. I don't know why she dropped the royal jelly just now too. She just randomly decided to drop that. That was weird. 
and she made it and she made a poor one this thing actually gives a really bad insulation i did not realize that the insulation was so bad on this thing well we're gonna wear it anyways that's actually gonna be less insulation than her tribal wear so her comfortable temperature just went up actually let's also go outside and pick up all this meat and stuff it's raining now it's toxic rain actually just poisonous for people and animals and wait she just got a moderate toxic buildup from i think it was getting near that ancient reactor hive because we didn't pass by any of the toxic barrels okay that could have been really bad it if toxic buildup goes up to 100%, they die. But yeah, her toxic buildup will go down over time slowly now. She does have hypothermia. We're gonna have her make a hood, which is like a headpiece. And I'm hoping this is gonna give her enough insulation. 11 only, that's not that much, but I think it might be enough, at least to prevent the hypothermia. Her hypothermia is not going up or down right now. Okay, I don't know why this is happening, but I'm making it so she's only able to do recreation. And I'm putting her in, oh, okay, this horseshoe pin actually is blocked off. I'm pretty sure she can't throw horseshoes inside of here. Let's move it outside in the toxic rain, I guess, and she should should throw horseshoes or she's gonna go dig at the steel move it down here maybe there we go oh we're getting a manhunter pack of just one mutated squirrel is our wealth really that low our wealth is 9.2k but we only have one colonist so i think that really affects raids and stuff oh no that would have been enough leather for the nice costume i will say that might be enough leather to maybe make some gloves or something and that could give her a bit more insulation oh wait there's actually two squirrels Oh, she got tagged. That's annoying. We were one-shotting all these things, and all of a sudden she just stopped being able to one-shot them. Her toxic buildup and hypothermia, I think, don't help her combat ability, though. But yeah, we're going to butcher these guys up. I guess in the toxic rain. We're not going to be out here for that long. You know, before we butcher up the squirrels, actually, we should have her tend up her injuries. She's got four bites that, yeah, we definitely should tend those up. She's getting not the best tens, but that's all right. But yeah, from butchering up those two squirrels, we got 50 leather, which might be enough for, like, some boots. Can she wear boots? I don't think so. She's got a tail. We're going to have her make some gloves, and those give her eight degrees more insulation. We should also have her wear this patch leather tribal wear for now just because we don't need the social impact or trade price improvement yet i don't know why i wasn't wearing that before and yeah that lowers her comfortable temperature down to 54 degrees and right now it's 78 degrees so yeah she's completely fine while this toxic rain's going on there's really not much she can do outside so we're gonna have her make one more meatball i'm actually gonna load that in the caravan we're gonna load all this stuff into a caravan and we're gonna leave of course she has to go all the way down to the south side of the map to leave but yeah outside there shouldn't be any toxic rain pretty sure her toxic buildup should be going down yeah it's going down it goes down so slowly though man that sucks to get any kind of toxic buildup whatsoever because that lowers consciousness by 15 percent and that just affects everything but yeah one thing about our base location is we do have a couple neighbors that are pretty close by like hair is actually a high-tech faction and they might have some stuff for us they have a couple slaves and they actually have another rockle too this girl's an enchanter and she's got arcane conduit whoa she could be really good actually she's greedy so she wants a really nice room but yeah her traits are actually decent i think enchanters want good crafting though which she does not have good crafting or any passion in crafting whatsoever, but she does learn a bit quicker. I wish she was okay in skills, because yeah, the Enchanter Arcane Conduit combo is really good. Well, Arcane Conduit with any class is really good, but yeah. She does cost 2300 though. I don't even know if we could afford her. Like, we got so much insect jelly and royal insect jelly, though, and this stuff sells for quite a bit. And yeah, we actually could afford her if we wanted to. Kind of want to buy gear, too, though. Like, there's a lot of other stuff we could use. Even, like, the Skill Trainer Artistic, that would boost our art skill by a ton. Or you get a Mono Sword. That would be insane for 30 3400 though we don't have enough Ooh, this samurai power armor would be insanely good too that increases melee dodge and movement speed i actually have a plan here on how we could pick up that power armor so there's an infested settlement pretty close by which is going to have a lot of loot it's just that there's gonna be a lot of insects there and if we go there alone it's gonna be really hard to juke them but if we pick up stella the other rackle which like yeah her stats aren't that good but i mean being that she's an enchanter with increased mana regen i feel like that right there is gonna be so useful she's also agile so she moves a bit quicker too yeah we're gonna pick her up for all of our gel in the morning, Snake Girl and Stella are going to head over to this infested settlement. And we'll be doing that in the next episode. If you guys enjoyed it, then drop a like and I will see you in the next one.